My personal belief is that as vast as the universe is, our ultimate destiny is for human race to become interstellar. But in order to be able to do that, we need to take steps to get there. And eventually, building technologies that can go beyond our solar system and traverse into our galaxies. And then I think, to me, when you talk about 10 to 15 years, 20 years from now, my hope is that we have a space city, you know, a place that people actually can go and live. Cam Gafarian is an entrepreneur who has started several space companies. His most well-known company is Axiom Space, which is building what could be the first commercial space station. He's also built other companies in the space industry, including Intuitive Machines, which is building lunar landers and pursuing commercial missions to the moon. Then there is also Quantum Space, which is trying to build a space superhighway to move payloads in cislunar orbit, the space between the Earth and the Moon. And finally, his other main company is X Energy, which is building small modular nuclear reactors, which are far safer and easier to build and smaller than conventional large nuclear reactors. I was born in Isfahan, Iran. And uh, I came to the United States when I was 18 years old with an incredible love of uh, space programs. <laughs> Since childhood, I was just like looking at the stars. I'm a stargazer and just sort of mesmerized about the stars and can we go there, you know, how far are they? And really a transformational moment was when I saw Neil Armstrong landing on the surface of the moon from my neighbor's black and white television. And it was like, wow, we can actually, you know, go to another planet and, you know, and that sort of really triggered it for me that this is what I wanted to do. I actually landed in Washington, D.C. and I got myself registered at Catholic University of America. That's where I worked on my first degree, computer science engineering. I came with $2,000 that I borrowed from my uncle to come to the United States. So when I came, I didn't have a whole lot of money. Therefore, I had to work every night. In fact, I worked downtown Washington, D.C. parking cars for the three years that I finished a double degree program. Cam Gaffarian founded SGT, also known as Stinger Gaffarian Technologies, in 1994. He co-founded it with Harold Stinger. And it was basically a government contracting business. They did government contracting primarily for NASA, and it was the first company he started after previously working at Lockheed Martin and Ford Aerospace. It initially started in his basement. He mortgaged his house to start the company, and over time it grew much larger. It actually started as a Section 8A company, which is a federal program for businesses owned by minorities, and it eventually grew by 2006 it had become the 20th largest contractor for NASA with $100 million in contracts. And by the time Cam sold it in 2018, it was worth $355 million when he sold it to publicly traded KBR. What you're gonna hear a whole lot from me is culture, culture, culture. And when I say culture, it's not just being ethical or being integrity-based, but a culture of being successful, culture of winning proposals, culture are taking care of the people. One of the things at SGT that sort of distinguished us from everybody else was really a culture and our core values. Everybody would say, oh, it's the ICE principles. And ICE stood for integrity, customers, and employees. Integrity at the center of everything that we do, bend over backward to take care of our customers, and our employees are at the heart of everything that we do. That sort of really was the key to our success at SGT. So people who joined the company wouldn't want to leave. In fact, in a period of 23 years, this is sort of incredible, I had no executive that joined the company in 23 years that voluntarily left. The first company I founded after SGT in 2009 was X Energy. And it was really because of, I started a school in Africa in Kinshasa and you know I really knew nothing about nuclear or nothing about the energy world. My, I, I consider myself a space cadet and we sponsored four orphans and 
and that school now has grown to like close to 800 people. But I learned that the school didn't have power, right? And I learned very quickly that there's a direct relationship between standard of living around the world and having electricity. So if you don't have electricity, you don't have clean water, you don't have education. And also with all the stuff that was going on with using the fossil fuel and you know how much carbon we generate and you know and we're in this beautiful precious blue globe and if we don't protect it it's our home if we don't protect it so far we don't have another place that we can go that was the really the genesis behind x energy and we've sort of done what i call is the holy grail in nuclear where we design nuclear reactors that are 100 percent safe in the other words, if there's a tsunami or there's an earthquake or any of that, or plane crashes to it, they can never go super critical. And because of that, you can have them in the middle of cities or anywhere. And today we are world leader in advanced nuclear. In fact, we won a two and a half billion dollar grant from DOE uh, to build these nuclear reactors. Uh, it's pretty incredible. The first company founded after X Energy came in 2013 when he founded Intuitive Machines, which eventually became a company whose goal it was to build lunar landers and really start to commercialize the moon. Three years later came Axiom Space, which he co-founded with Mike Safradini, who was the longtime director of NASA's International Space Station program. Axiom is the company that's building what could be the first commercial space station, also designing the next generation of spacesuits for NASA. In 2016, I got together with Michael Safradini, who was the previous program manager for International Space Station for NASA. And we knew the United States government was not going to build another space station. They were going to rely on private industry to do that. So with this unique experience, and my experience, we actually run the operation of International Space Station 24 by 7. One of my proud things that I like to say is when the astronaut from space talk and say Houston, they would be talking to my company employees. <laughs> and so it was a very bold vision. We built the first private commercial space station. And that's really, that's the vision that got us started in, in 2016 to open the doors for Axiom Space. After about 30 years at the agency, I started looking around. I hadn't really thought a lot about what I was gonna do, but there were a couple of offers out there. So it got me thinking, well, maybe there is another life after this. By the way, I had the best job in the whole agency. You know, I had a front row seat to everything that happened on orbit. It was really, it was a lot of fun. So when I started thinking about it, I, Cam was one of those people that had a reputation of, you know, being a mover and a shaker in the industry and I, wanted to seek his advice, just his thoughts on, you know, what I should do in my afterlife. Well, if you know Cam, you don't just spend a lot of time talking about things like that. You know, I called him and said, you know, Cam, the only thing I know how to do is build and operate a space station. So, you know, I've, I've kind of lived it in my capabilities. So I'll wait till somebody, surely some company was going to come along. And so I told Cam that, I said, so I'll wait, somebody will come along and maybe that's what I'll do. And, uh, and he said, okay, let's, let's go build a space station. So he seeded the company and, and uh, we went from there. That's, that's how we started together building our, our space station. Axiom Space has a very ambitious goal. It's to build the world's first commercial space station. They're actually the only company that's out there that has the rights to attach their modules. So the, the building blocks of their space station, so to speak, to the International Space Station. The first one of those modules is set to go up in 2026. That's their main goal, and the thing that they're building currently is the Axiom Space Station. However, they've already completed two successful missions to the International Space Station, where they brought commercial astronauts, so people paying to, to be an astronaut and go to the ISS, as well as astronauts from countries that haven't had the chance to go to space yet. So Saudi Arabia, for example, sent two astronauts on the second Axiom mission. My belief is that the ultimate destiny for human beings is to go to stars, to actually do interstellar travel, to really go to other stars. Because the universe is so enormous and vast. And in our galaxy alone, there are 400 billion stars like our sun with planets around it. And there are trillion other galaxies. So we're just such a small part. So my personal belief is that 
As vast as the universe is, our ultimate destiny is for human race to become interstellar. But in order to be able to do that, we need to take steps to get there. First is LEO, low Earth orbit. We need to have human presence there. Then going to the moon and to Mars is, you know, further steps. Having the space infrastructure where you can go from Earth to the moon and beyond is another thing. And so these companies all follow that larger vision. So one thing that always came up with the, I think, more than a dozen people I spoke to about Cam is that he's really ambitious, which you kind of get just from learning about the companies he's built, but also that he's able to convince people and motivate them to actually get those very ambitious projects done. You know, you look at the incredible amount of ex-NASA sort of rock stars he's brought over, people who are leading their fields, and he convinced them to come to the private sector and build these companies. He went with Axe Energy from not knowing anything about energy to now being one of the leading companies in nuclear energy, right? And these new reactors that could really make a huge difference in renewable energy goals. And obviously the jury's still out. Anything could, could happen in the, in the future. There's a lot of competition out there. It's still a speculative market, right, for space stations and for a lot of these things. But when you look at sort of his initial dreams and visions, commercial lunar landers, commercial space station, the nuclear reactors, where he's been able to take those ideas in terms of the funding and the people he's brought with him and turning them into real businesses, that's really impressive and that really stood out to me when I was talking to him and the people who've known him for a long time. I really hope that my legacy is that I contributed to advanced the state of humanity and human knowledge, which is really the vision that I've had for many years, including SGT. To know that someone maybe breathed easier as a result of you, you've lived through my philanthropic activities and also making a difference for our planet, like with X Energy, so that our children can survive the climate change and everything else. So making a difference and making this planet and also going to other places a better place for us.